Well, hello there, humans and earthlings, whoever you are, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, and if you're lucky enough indeed to be doing it too, welcome back to channel. Uh, do not adjust your televisual sets. Uh, today we're going to be running through the Progeno M46, uh, the... What's the full special name? The Progetto M35 Mod.46 Tier 8 Premium Tank for the Pan-European line, where all your Pan-European dreams come true. Um, this is the tank that transcends Brexit. Uh, let's have a political argument <laughs> when we're talking about tanks. Uh, stick around, because I'm going to tell you why I like this tank so much, where it falls in relation to the P44 Pantera that is the Tech Tree Tier 8 Premium Medium. Why I think Wargaming actually got this one right. And uh, lots and lots of little odds and sods about what's going on in the world right now. Now, the thing I like a lot about this tank is that it's just a variation on a theme to the Tech Tree tank. And if you look at the raw numbers on it, there's not a lot that screams out that it is actually better than the Tech Tree tank, which is something that we've come to expect for a lot of these uh medium tanks or a lot of these tier 8 premium tanks that they are in fact uh just improvements upon the tech tree tank tank and you can buy that improvement and that power creep and we don't love that we call that wallet worrying and i don't particularly oppose it but that's a philosophical debate for another youtube channel and time um but what they've done is they've taken the p44 and the pantera and just adjusted a few things on it so that it does have a different feel and play style to this tank despite the fact that i think the the raw numbers suggest that this tank is probably a little bit inferior there are a couple of things i prefer about this tank and i was surprised when i started running it i didn't have any huge games in it and look the armor's a lock it's it's no real difference they're both crap armor wise that's the pan P, the pantera that's the the Progetto M46, that's the Pantera. They're both rubbish. Like, they're, you're going to get pent. There's there's nothing spectacular about the armor. Uh, the two main differences where the Progetto beats the Pantera for me are Alpha and the shell reload time. Now, there is also a extra degree of gun depression here, and that is certainly helpful. Um, nine degrees versus eight degrees is a real thing, and obviously I prefer tanks with more gun depression. So straight out of the bat, that's a winner. But the Pantera is faster. It has more damage per minute as a, a, pure, um, a pure number, and it's got more penetration on its AP rounds. In fact, it's got considerably more penetration. Uh, 203 millimeters of AP pen versus 180 millimeters of AP pen on this little beauty. And they've got the same exact penetration numbers on their APCR, 259 millimeters of APCR pen. And because obviously you're running an APCR tank, you are probably not gonna take the calibrated shells, which improves your penetration numbers. Because that only gives a 5% bonus to AP and APCR, whereas you get a, a, a whopping big 10% bonus to heat uh, when you do that, which is much nicer. Where the hell was I? So the the raw numbers there definitely favor the, the Pantera. What I love about this is the 240 alpha and the 2.5 second reload time. The Pantera's reload time is three seconds, and I struggle tremendously with that tank. And I think the key here is that in two and a half seconds, you get 0.5 of a second less where the enemy can see you before you can get your shell off, like here. Now, each shell I fired there had a reload of 2.5 seconds, and you saw a shell come whizzing back. That's basically two lots of 0.5 in the gap, the first shell, then a 2.5 second reload, then the second shell, then a 2.5 second reload, and boom, then the third shell. I had to fire three shells to get a round that scored. If I was in the P44 Pantera, there would have been a full thousand, uh, full second extra where I was exposed to get that third shell off. And that guy who fired that last round as I pulled back would have been firing square into my tank. And that for me is the real key. That is the real key. Uh, that extra, like there's a shell, there's another shell coming in now. And then that tank vanishes, and so my auto-aim doesn't work, and it goes into the edge of the, the building. The Pantera doesn't get that second shell. Because a full, like, like, doesn't, like, okay. What I'm saying is that reloading faster for me is more important in a an auto-loader or a drum reload or an automatic reloader than it is 
to actually have a higher DPM. Because when you're looking at these tanks, they're burst tanks. They're tanks where you have three in the clip, you're going to bang them out, one, two, three, and then you're going to hide. That's really what you're looking at as an autoloader. Where this will struggle, this tank, which I think is completely reasonable, is in brawls and dogfights against other tanks. When you are just basically up against another tank that pushes into you and tries to hit point trade, your DPM is just god awful. 2030 DPM in a tier 8 tank is the kind of DPM you get on an IS series tank, like a big derpy 120mm IS-6 or something like that, that's when you're going to be getting in real trouble. And I like that because that means that there is a real benefit to running the Pantera, which has a slightly lower alpha, 225 versus 240, and yet has more pen, has a slightly longer area between shells, and it makes two tanks that are quite similar in their mechanic uh, very... And there's that God awful pen, like 180 millimeters just taking out a track, not enough to get through. Um, so I like that they've balanced the tank in a reasonable fashion like that. You've got two tier eight auto reloaders uh, where you're running a drum gun and, and I like that, but they are different tanks, very different tanks for me. And I prefer this tank and I actually won an awful lot in this tank. I just didn't manage to get big games in it. I did, however, have my mate Fizzy uh, prep up a big game, a, a big 4.5k domination in the P46. Uh, so here we go. Let's let's roll that tape. Bushka, while I have a coffee. Thank you. Ah, love that coffee. Got a stream to commentate later, so I'm trying to pump the coffee up and just lose my mind. There's the Fizzmeister General. Now, he is running the tank with a different camo scheme. Good on him. Uh, I mean... I ran a lot of games in it, but I just couldn't get big numbers. I won pretty much everything. And it was weird to have... Here's a funny thing about being a YouTuber. We all whinge and moan and bitch about um, people being really bad on our teams. But when you try to do big numbers, you need everyone else in your team to not be competent. Or what ends up happening is they actually do damage and you just keep winning and doing 2K, 2.5K and... No one wants to watch that. <laughs> they want big numbers. Big, juicy numbers at Helsing. If you just fire Helsing. There you go. Someone's fired something. Um, was it the Helsing? Fizzy's like, I think it was the Helsing. And the Helsing's not paying attention. So he's going to cop. Oh, sets him on fire. Lovely stuff. Now, this is this is the thing. I like the idea far more, and it suits my playstyle far more, of playing peekaboo, of ducking out and booming with three shells in five seconds and doing that less often than ducking out and booming with three shells in six seconds. Now, the reload on the shells between the Pantera and the Progetto M46, and if it feels like I'm referencing the Pantera a lot, it's because it's obviously the only other thing to reference against this tank. It is not a system that's in the game apart from those two tanks. And it's because of that, I, I think you've got to really understand that this is almost like a choosing a preference and a play style. I prefer this. And it, it's amazing to me that I can love this tank so much and yet really not love the way the uh, the Pantera rolls for me. I was never able to feel comfortable with that. But this, I'd put it on, it fit like a glove immediately. And I like the fizzy is rolling away there. He's seeing that there's not a great opportunity there. The reloads, for instance, are 6.65 per second on your first shell on this, 4.88 seconds on your second shell, and then 4.88 seconds reload on your third shell. So it takes a long time to get those shells back. And... The reloads on the Pantera are 6.65 on your first shell, 3.55 on your second, and 3.1 seconds on your third. So you can see that the numbers go down for the Pantera and they don't really go anywhere friendly on this thing. So you've got to be sure that when you're firing, you're firing all three together as often as possible and then kind of playing it more like a traditional autoloader like that T69 there where you wait for all three to go back up before you get involved because this has a traditional autoloader re -time, reload time between shells, one every 2.5 seconds and that's really important. It's also got excellent speed. Its mobility is not as good as the Pantera's but it's not far off. 55 kilometers an hour versus 60 kilometers an hour on the Pantera and 22.22 power to weight ratio. Now that is actually a really good power to weight ratio uh, despite it's not as good 
quite as good as the Pantera's. It's still very bloody good. So all in all, it's a, a tank that I can highly recommend and it's got a nuanced play style that is just a little bit different to the P44 Pantera's playstyle. A big game there from Fizzy. Thanks very much for uh, sending that along, mate. I hope you guys enjoyed the review. I hope you are looking forward to a lot more content this year on the channel. I've got a real uh, load of gear just lined up, some different sounding... Uh, I've got some interesting stuff coming up. So stick around, look after yourselves, tell your friends, get on, subscribe, love, and just all in all, enjoy. And until next time, stay safe on Z Battlefield. Bye for now.